Hello everyone, my name is Bing Hui Le. I'm Kevin Vinev. My name is Carlos Gonzalez Ochoa. We are going to present about accelerating direct data mush skinning using continuous example poses. First, to provide the context of our work, we will revise delta mush deformer. It uses geometry smoothing or mushing, which smooths out both global deformation and local geometry details of the model. To keep the geometry details, we compute the delta, which is the difference of the rest pose and its smooth version. And the final deformation is computed by adding the delta back to the mush of the deformed pose. Although this idea is very effective for offline applications, its performance is not so great for real-time use, particularly with video games in our case. The reason is geometry smoothing is an iterative process and is not effective to be implemented on GPU. So two years ago, we proposed an improvement called Direct Data Mush Skinning or DDM in short. The main idea of DDM is removing the iterative process by pre-computing and caching the DDM skinning weights. At runtime, we compute the transformation of each vertex by first blending DDM weights after performing bone transformations, and then compute a singular decomposition or SVD of a 3x3 matrix to orthogonalize the rotation part. This process is still quite costly because we need to store 4x4 weight matrices and we need to compute SVD for each vertex at runtime. To improve the performance of DDM, we have a look into previous two-step skinning process. Kavan and Kolish accelerated dual quaternion skinning by first computing the expensive dual quaternion blending to a small set of vertical bones, and then performing a cheaper LBS to all vertices. Lee and Deng propose a similar two-layer setup to handle LBS with dense weights. The first layer is a dense but small LBS, and the second layer is a large but sparse model that computes per-vertex transformations from the output of the first layer. In this work, we also design a two-layer model as shown on the right. The first layer is a small direct data mush skinning model, and the second layer is a large linear blend skinning model. They are connected by a set of vertical bones, which passes the transformations from the first to the second layer. Our two-layer model is automatically computed from the original DDM model, which includes skinning weights, rest pose, skeleton hierarchy, and bipoles. We can also take the range of motions of every bones into consideration. And the output includes the weights of the two layers. Intuitively, we think that vertices with similar original DDM skinning weights should have similar skinning transformation. And therefore, we can save the computational cost by sharing the nonlinear computation across vertical bones. This intuition is similar to the other compression methods that use a small set of linear bases to approximate the original data. However, a direct compression on the original weights omega does not work because omega does not explicitly represent the skinning deformations. Instead, we formulate our problem as a skinning from examples framework, where we minimize the sum of square compression error between the deformation of the original DDM and the deformation of the two-layer model over the set of example poses. But instead of using discrete example poses like the traditional framework, we use example poses generated by bone transformations in continuous range of motions. Here, we need special design example poses that only transform one bone at a time. Our error here is a function of bone transformation M and DDM weights omega. We can perform simplification on this function by a series of transformation on M and omega. Here, omega sub ji is the original DDM weight of bone j on vertex i, and the transformations will map omega to omega prime, then omega prime to omega 2 prime, and so on. Each map here will resolve a particular problem, such as a linearizing DDM model, handling the skeleton hierarchy, handling the bipoles, and the range of motions for example poses. Our first map is the linearization map, recalling the original DDM model. 
Well, it should be a text i. We need to compute the rotation r sub i by singular value decomposition to orthogonalize the matrix. But this is difficult to formulate and optimize the objective function with this nonlinear operator. So we make a linear approximation by multiplying the inverse of the 3 by 3 matrix, which is computed from the sum of all DDM weights of vertex i. Performing simplification, we can derive a linear formulation to compute the transformation of vertex i, and we can group this into a 4 by 4 matrix omega prime. This computation can be viewed as a map from a 4 by 4 matrix omega to a new 4 by 4 matrix omega prime. The second map is the hierarchical mapping. When the bones are organized in a skeleton, each bone will propagate its transformation to all children. If we ignore the skeleton when sampling poses, its distribution will not match the distribution of poses at runtime with skeleton. To handle the skeleton, we compute a hierarchical matrix H and use it to compute the propagation on the bone transformation M sub J. And because the multiplication to H is linear, we can simplify the equations by moving H to the multi weights, and we yield this hierarchical map. The third map is the bipole coordinate changing map. So for a skinning model, the bipole contains the transformation of bones when we set up the model. It is the reference to move the bones when we perform animation. We add the bipole by pre-multiplicating the inverse of the bi matrix B sub gamma, where gamma is a bone index. Our fourth and final map is the continuous sampling map. So after the hierarchical and the coordinate changing maps in the previous steps, we have moved the bone transformations to their local coordinates. It makes the new bone transformation and bar sub gamma distributed around the identity matrix. We can compute the integral of this transformation over the range of rotation r bar sub gamma and the range of translation t bar sub gamma. And this integral has the explicit solution like this, which is our map to represent the range of motions for the pole sampling. Here's an example of using different ranges of motions. With the uniform range of joy rotation, our algorithm distributes more vertebral bones in the body, which are shown by the red dots. The reason is the body is thicker than the limbs, so with the same range of rotation, the reconstruction error on the body is higher, and the optimization will use more vertebral bones. But as we can see at the bottom, this solution has much higher reconstruction error on the arm. Putting everything together, we have this objective function. I want to explain all notations, but I just present some interesting highlights. Here, A is the scalar LBS weight of the second layer. Delta 4 prime is the map DDM weight of the first layer. Omega 4 prime is the map weight of the original input DDM model, and U is the vertex position at rest pose. Our compression arrow E is computed over all n vertices by sampling all m bones. And note that the integration has already handled continuous poses, so the number of poses does not appear in our final equation. There are a combination of four maps that we have just presented. Here are the linearization maps the hierarchical maps, the coordinate changing maps, and the continuous sampling maps. My name is Carlos Gonzalez Ochoa, and I'm going to talk about the method we use to solve this problem. We define an objective function based on the original DDM weights represented by matrix omega, and solve two matrices, matrix delta, which corresponds to the multi-weights for the virtual joints in the first layer, and matrix A, the linear blend skin and scalar weights of the second layer. This function resembles a matrix of factorization problem, and we choose a sparse coding optimization strategy to solve it. For this decomposition, we approximate the matrix omega into the previously defined matrices. Notice that in difference to the work of Li and Dang, the matrices omega and delta are not composed of scalar values, but are composed of elements of a four by four matrix. And just like in the original DDM multi-weights, because of the symmetries, there's only 10 unique elements in these four by four matrices. So instead of solving this factorization problem in a single step, we use the strategy of an iterative solver alternating between two steps. The first step we solve for the scalar weights of matrix A, 
while keeping delta, the virtual bonds of multi weights fixed. Then we saw for delta, the multi weights of virtual bonds while keeping matrix A, the scalar weights fixed. So the final structure of the algorithm will look like this. Note that the input is the position of the vertices of the mesh in the rest pose and omega four prime, the matrix of the original DDM's multi-weight matrices after being transformed by the previously defined maps. After initialization, we will alternate between the solving steps and add another operation to maintain a robust solution. Let me describe briefly the steps of the algorithm. To initialize the matrices, we use farthest point sampling and select a number P number of vertices. This number P corresponds to the number of desired virtual bonds and is user defined. From these vertices indexed by K, we transfer their corresponding weights of the original DDM multi-weight to the corresponding virtual bond with index K. These weights will become the initial values of the virtual bonds. For each of these vertices, we update its scalar weight to point to the corresponding virtual joint. Notice that at this point, the multi-weights deltas are suboptimized, but we later will, be, will refine them. The second part of the initialization, we set initial conditions to the scalar weights for the rest of the vertices and update the multi-weights matrices. Using K means clustering. We find clusters to, of the closest vertices to each one of the virtual bonds. Note that we're using a, a distance metric between a vertex to the virtual bone in the DDM multi-weight space and we are not using Euclidean distances. From these clusters, we update the multi-weights of the virtual bone as the average of the original DDM multi-weights. We also update the scalar weight for each one of the vertices from the virtual bone to the vertex. Now we can see like how the iterative part of the algorithm works. First, we're going to update the scalar weights. Remember at this step, we keep the virtual joints fixed. We minimize per vertex and objective functions that uses a smoothness regularization scheme with constraints. We solve this using non-negative least squares with an affinity constraint, but please refer to the paper for more details. The next step, we're going to update the virtual bones multi-weights by minimizing the following objective function. Remember, the scalar weights are kept fixed in this step. Unfortunately, this function is linear to delta four prime but we cannot solve delta directly because the linearization map cannot be inverted. However, we can invert the hierarchical, the coordinate changing and the continuous sampling maps and solve for delta prime. For implementation, we have derived an, impl an explicit formula to go from delta prime to delta using an iterative method, but please refer to the paper for more details. After the solver steps, we normalize the multi-weights to enforce symmetry and make sure that all the virtual bones scalar weights sum to one. If we detect that the determinant of any of the virtual bones is less than some tolerance, we skip the virtual bone update. This ensures robustness in the algorithm and forces all bones to be fully utilized. If a virtual bone needs to be reinitialized or it has an insignificant contribution, in this case, we look for the vertex with the largest compression error and assign its original DDM weights for this virtual bone and resolve the scalar weights of the second layer. Hi, I'm Kevin Villeneuve and I'll be talking about implementing our runtime algorithm on the GPU. First, I will talk about the folding point cancellation issue that we've encountered. To deform a mesh using DDM, a rotation matrix needs to be computed from the singular value decomposition of a three by three matrix. This matrix is computed as the difference of the top left corner and a cross product of two vectors. This calculation is particularly problematic since those two matrices can potentially contain very large values. Computing their difference leads to unstable results due to the floating point cancellation occurring. We see that this issue is particularly noticeable near the fingers of characters, where even a small error can lead to big deformation artifacts. This error is temporarily unstable and produces undesirable flickering in the animation of characters such as this one. We propose to eliminate this issue by doing a coordinate change to the center of rotation or equivalently as a translation. The end result is that we are able to compute this 3 by 3 matrix directly instead of computing it as the difference of two matrices with potentially big values that could cause floating point cancellation error to occur. This solution only requires an additional three folds per virtual bone and does not change the computation time. 
I'll now go into more details about the GPU implementation. Implementing our method in the game engine is straightforward. The DDM layer can be efficiently implemented as a compute shader, while the LBS layer can be used as the same shader already available in the game engine. For the 3 by 3 svd we use the fast and robust method proposed by McAdam and colleagues with four iterations. In order to obtain the best performance and to maximize GPU occupancy, we, ma we batch scanning on many characters. Here is a screen capture of our implementation running in real time. Real time in video game does not only mean 30 FPS. Since the frame time in a video game is usually shared between rendering, animation, physics, and gameplay, little time is left to do skinning. In practice, only a fraction of that frame time is available to do skinning. This means that any skinning method slower than LBS won't even be considered. In addition, the technique needs to use as little memory as possible. Even though GPU nowadays offers a lot of memory, it AAA games consistently manage to fill it. Our work attempts to address both of those constraints. Here is the performance comparison between our model, DDM, and LBS. Sparse LBS denotes the original LBS model, and dense LBS denotes the model generated by DDM Varian 5, which has more non-zero weights than the original LBS. Number in this table are average skinning time per vertex in nanoseconds. We can see that our model is about as fast as LBS and two times faster than DDM. So we hope that our technique can overcome the performance overhead and gain industry adoption just like the classical LBS did. Next, we show more results. Here's a visualization of our vertical bones, where each vertical bone is a red dot. During animation, these red dots are transformed by applying the vertical bone transformation generated by the first DDM layer. Here's a visualization of the compression error with different numbers of vertical bones. The height of this character is 185 centimeters. So the relative error here is mostly smaller than 1%. Because our two-layer model is an approximation for DDM skinning, it preserves the distinctive features of DDM. In this example, both DDM and our model generate nice skin sliding for the chest of the character. This effect is not possible with previous techniques such as LBS, no matter of how you set up the skinning weights. With the spot weights, there is no global elastic effect on the belly. And with denser weights, the belly expands to two sides, which is due to the bulging artifact of LBS. And here's a visualization of our vertical bones animation. Another effect that our model inherits from DDM is the negative bulging which can be used to improve the deformation near the hip joint. Without utilizing this effect, we can see a fold over artifact as shown on the left with LBS. And again, here's the, vi here's the visualization of our vertical bones animation. In conclusion, we have proposed a two-layer skinning model that takes the best of both worlds, the high quality with a simple setup of the delta mush deformer and the fast performance of the linear blend skinning. Our model is automatically computed from a direct data mush model by skinning compression with continuous examples. The computation is robust and easy to implement, and our formulation is flexible enough to support high-level controls such as skeleton hierarchy, bipoles, and range of motions. We also found a fix for the floating point cancellation issue of DDM. In practice, we believe other extensions are possible. For example, we can modify the continuous sampling integration to accommodate hinge joints, which are the joints with only two rotation axes. We can also add traditional discrete example poses to our formulation. And that's all for our talk. If you want to find more information about this project, please visit our website at see it.ea.com. Thank you very much.